An American Bell and British socialite, one of three surviving daughters, was born in Brooklyn on January the 9th, 1854. Her father was a financier, while her mother was of an independent fortune. The family would migrate to Paris before settling in England due to the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War. It was then that she first came into contact with a restless yet ambitious man who would change her life forever. A political swing she quite possibly never envisaged, although the social elite of women still had doubts about her, but she would easily overcome the prejudices and as young as she was, there was a commanding quality in her very presence. So join me now as we look back at the remarkable life of Lady Randolph Churchill and please like the video and consider subscribing for more historical stories. When the eldest Jerome child was 11, the family relocated to Paris, where they were able to raise and educate their children. It was now that Miss Jenny Jerome's expressive and musical talents were finely honed, and over time was widely regarded as one of the finest pianists since she first stepped into high society. When Jerome and his wife settled in Paris during the reign of the Second Empire, France was at the pinnacle of its power and prestige. Mrs. Jerome was a wealthy and cultured woman who quickly rose to prominence in the high society of the French capital. While this was happening, her eldest daughter was becoming known for more than just her stunning good looks. Her remarkable mental ability also gained much attention. But the happiness they had would soon turn to despair as the family fled to Britain after being forced to leave France by the Franco-Prussian War. They would stay in England amid the terrible events overseas that led to the downfall of the empire and the rise of the communards. In the summer of 1873, at Cowes on the Isle of Wight, things began to look up for Jenny. As a 20-year-old, she was tall and slim, with a prominent brow and square chin, but these acquisitions both betrayed her talent and temperament. Her eyes were the most striking feature of her face, and her purple-black hair and clear olive skin set her apart from other women in England. Almost overnight, Miss Jerome rose to prominence. It was the center of attention wherever she went, and she never let any hint of vanity detract from the impact of her appearance. It was then she caught the eye of another English aristocrat, second son of the sixth Duke of Marlborough, and luckily he was also on holiday on the Isle of Wight that summer. Randolph Churchill was an ambitious man who wavered between a diplomatic and military career as he had already travelled around Europe by the time he graduated in 1871. He had already reached iconic status for his mother since he had consistently demonstrated the utmost chivalry through his kindness. He shared her strength of character and zest for life. She was always interested in and supportive of his endeavours. Randolph, for his part, never missed an opportunity to let her know about his achievements as soon as possible, whether in person or via correspondence. After first meeting Jenny Jerome, the future took on an undeniable and quite beautiful turn of appearance for the first time. He told his mother about the girl from the United States and immediately roused her curiosity about her. However, Jenny's mother didn't think the Duke's youngest son was a good match simply because his future looked bleak. It seemed that Jenny would remain single as the family packed up and headed back to Paris. But not to be outdone by this minor detail, Lord Randolph followed the girl of his dreams. The family eventually gave in and Randolph married Miss Jerome in January 1874 at the British Embassy. It was a great match. Jenny shared his drive and aptitude for excellence she became integral to his quest for personal distinction. Randolph knew the road ahead was rocky, but with a good plan and a stable, beautiful wife by his side, things slowly started to gel. His march through the ranks began close to home, in the Woodstock neighbourhood near Blenheim Palace, when he was born almost 25 years prior. Jenny, who was now known as Lady Randolph Churchill, had little trouble overcoming the preconceptions held by English women about all American women. But despite her youth, she had an air of authority 
that disarmed those who harboured bigotry towards others solely because of their nationality. John Winston Churchill, the younger of her two sons, was born in February of 1880, and Winston Spencer Churchill on November 30th, 1874. The early years of her existence in England were spent juggling the domestic responsibilities that came with her status in the world and the social obligations that came with it. Politically, Randolph had found his purpose in life. In 1883, he co-founded the Primrose League with Sir H. Drummond Wolfe to further conservative party interests. It was a new era in Lady Churchill's life, and from that point on, she identified strongly with her husband's public life and interests, lending him not only the fame she had already achieved, but also the great astuteness she demonstrated regarding all political matters. Due to her extensive campaign as Dame of the Primrose League, she was about as well known in England as any man in political office. Jenny was appealing to the masses with her ability to draw crowds. These were the ones that gathered to hear Lady Churchill speak, enthralled and often mobbed as a superstar of the era by adoring fans. Lord Churchill was now at the forefront of his political party. When he returned to the cabinet as Chancellor of the Exchequer and leader of the House of Commons, just a few months after resigning as Secretary of State for India. Still, at the tender age of just 37, a future of almost unprecedented brilliance seemed to be opening before him. His next step up would be his final rise as he was on the verge of becoming Prime Minister. His wife's tall, thin physique and clear-eyed, interested face were as well known as his own. So when they appeared in public together, both were often greeted with spontaneous bursts of applause. Her social life followed a similar trend. She was in such high demand to open fairs, hand out prizes and perform in concerts because of her beauty and various talents that she remained in the spotlight even after her husband began to withdraw from public life. But tragically, the scenes of happiness would soon turn to expressions of sadness. Randolph rose in the dead quiet of the House of Commons to explain his decision to resign from the cabinet. She mirrored his good qualities more admirably than ever before or since. The countdown was on and Randolph began to suffer. Lord Randolph Churchill at the young age of 42 was confronted with the beginning of the end of his extraordinary and busy life in the year 1891. The subsequent complete physical breakdown, which culminated in his death in January 1895, explained many of the mysteries surrounding the latter days of his public career. The tragic loss of a man whose charisma had made him a role model for many from all walks of life sparked widespread outpourings of grief. On January the 24th, 1895, a little afternoon, his death was announced by the tolling of the funeral bell from St. George's in Hanover Square. Despite this, Jenny withdrew from society for a while after her husband's death. Although she had not faded from public consciousness, she remained just as fascinating as a single woman as when she was the wife of a legendary leader. Jenny was always friendly and showed genuine interest in her son's hobbies and pursuits such as sailing and horseback riding. Her devotion to an active lifestyle in the great outdoors is probably responsible for keeping her body looking trim and supple. Like how she became an essential part of her husband's life, she likewise immersed herself wholeheartedly in her son's fun and serious activities. Her eldest was about to embark on his own political career, Mr. Winston Churchill, a man who would also become a hero for the country, as did his father. Lady Randolph Churchill's public spiritedness and sense of initiative were on display at the commencement of the war in the Transvaal in 1899, further cementing her connection to the United Kingdom. She led the committee that oversaw the operation of the American hospital ship Maine, one of the best ambulance ships in the fleet. Jenny may have first come to prominence as the wife of Lord Randolph Churchill, 
and via her intimate association with his interests, but it is undeniable that her personality had created an aura that both satisfied and appeased the general public. But as with all things, time never stops. On July the 28th, 1900, Lady Randolph Churchill wed Mr. George Cornwallis West. Even though marriages between women and men many years their junior were not exceptionally uncommon in British society, the rumour of this engagement, which had been circulating for almost a year, prompted an unusual amount of discussion and condemnation. Although Jenny was George's sweetheart, he affectionately called her Pussycat, but over time they grew apart. Jenny considered selling the family home in Hertfordshire and moving into the Ritz Hotel in Piccadilly because of a lack of funds. As for George's health, it was precarious, so he spent his time in the Regal St Moritz ski resort attempting to get better. But no amount of cordiality could bring them back as one, and after Jenny and George's separation in 1912 and subsequent divorce in April 1914, Cornwallis West wed a Mrs Campbell. To completely sever any remaining ties through a deep hole, Jenny reverted to her maiden name, Churchill. On June the 1st, 1918, she wed her third husband, British civil servant, Montague Fippin Porch, who was three years younger than her son, Winston. Porch left the colonial service at the end of World War I, and he often traveled between England and South Africa, running his prosperous business. But on one occasion, while Montague was in Africa in May, 1921, Jenny broke her ankle when she stumbled on a friend's stairs while wearing brand new high heels. Her left leg had developed gangrene, and on June the 10th, it was amputated above the knee. Yet complications set in when her thigh artery ruptured, causing a hemorrhage. Jenny passed away on June the 29th in a London residence at 8 Westbourne Street. She was buried in the Churchill family plot at St Martin's Church in Bladen, Oxfordshire, and laid to rest beside her first husband. She was 67 years old. The extent to which Jenny's attractive appearance contributes to her allure is a matter of debate. In spite of the fact that she is known as a typical beauty with an exquisite feminine attractiveness as painted by Sargent, it has been said her masculinity, mental poise and temperament show the image to be a more accurate portrayal. Jenny was certainly multifaceted, powerful and self-sufficient and her unconventional appearance reflects who she was as a person. The Manhattan cocktail is sometimes erroneously attributed to Jenny Churchill. She supposedly asked the bartender to make a special drink to celebrate the election of Samuel J. Tilden to the New York governorship in 1874. Whether true or not, Jenny was an intoxicating lady who strived to be the best she could to all her suitors. Her death was tragic, but her life was uplifting. She crossed many barriers and rose to become one of American society's most talented and loved expats that shone as bright as any new star over the English sky. Music